You know what they say, it's always five o'clock somewhere. Actually, it's just after five o'clock on a Friday afternoon or evening, I should say. Been a long, busy week, but I'm going to go ahead and get started on finishing out all the trim on our new bar area. I, don't, I keep calling this a window, a bar. It's kind of both. It's a, it's a giant opening with a bar top, and it's kind of a window. A little bit of everything. So I'm gonna. I've got the jams. The jam legs are done. I cut and sanded and everything them. Uh, the other week while I was also doing the, the head jam as well because I needed to oil prime them like I mentioned to cover up some of the knots and I'm probably going to end up actually hitting them again because even though it's a stain blocking primer you can still see those those rascally little pine knots trying to poke through and since I still have a little bit of oil priming I need to do on places like this where I pulled the crown down I'm going to have a brush dirty with the, the oil primer already, so I'm going to go ahead and hit all those knots again just to make sure I don't want them poking through the latex paint after I apply that later. So yeah, I'll do the jams. I got casein for on the sides, and then um, I don't know if I'm going to get to the crown molding tonight. It's already basically dark out. Um, I might go ahead and kind of start prepping some of it, but I'll probably wait till tomorrow morning to put all that stuff up. So. I'm just gonna do a little bit right now and kind of get ready for the rest of it in the morning. few days later I ended up deciding to not continue on all the crown molding and everything yet and opted for working on all of the drywall on this entire space. Some areas were worse than others. Always not too terribly bad but uh, as I think I showed in the, the other day there was a lot of tear out specifically in that corner from pulling the crown molding down and then when I pulled this piece down it made a real mess because I wasn't super careful about it. So came in here, been working throughout the last basically week, kind of when I had time skimming various places. The hallway was pretty, or the, uh, the stairwell was pretty rough. So kind of filling in all the little nicks and dings and whatnot. And so now I'm gonna use our big beefy drywall sander. This is yet another Festool product. This is their, their first gen Plain-X. The newer ones actually have lights in the head so as it's as you're shining or you're sanding on the wall it illuminates down the wall so you can see how well you're sanding. But yeah this is a pretty pretty sweet tool. And I did finally locate my tripod this morning. So now I can have a little bit better angles of some of the stuff. I've, I've literally been like balancing this camera on various things like up on the top of a shelf or something really creative for the last month worth of videos that I've been filming because I wasn't sure where this tripod was, but I found it this morning. So I'm going to stop talking and start saving. It probably won't show up on camera, so I'm not even gonna try, but there's a lot of places, probably as many places as I actually skimmed in and filled you know, holes on the wall. There are also other things where there was just junk in the paint from when whoever sold the house kind of just put a coat of gray on everything and didn't do it super neatly or, or cleanly, which is not super uncommon. There's a lot of stuff that just needs to be knocked down. So I'm not only gonna sand all of the new work, but I'm gonna go ahead and sand the entire wall surface. First off with this big uh, eight inch sander and then come back with some more detailed, smaller ones to clean up everything and make it all nice and pretty and smooth.
done with the big sander. You should be able to see kind of the, the color change in the wall getting through this this lighter gray layer to some of the darker blue and uh, in some places the orange that used to be down there or pink or whatever pretty pretty well highlighted by how much is on that light switch but the the big one the big planex does a really good job around all the main areas but you should be able to see uh, it doesn't get all the way up against the trim especially so I've got a smaller sander that I'm going to clean all of that up with be using this bad boy here the the festool ets 125 it's a random orbital sander uh five inch wide head on it and uh yeah super good for cleaning up drywall edges on and small walls like that in between places like that where you can't get the big one and some of the detail work around you know outlets and stuff like that all right all of the drywall is sanded and ready to start priming so to save you guys the monotony of another endless montage of me just simply rolling primer over a whole bunch of white spots on the wall and looking more or less the same because it's going to be white primer over white drywall compound, I'm just going to do this. Alright, it is several days later from however long ago it's been since I had the camera on, but I have finished up all of the trim. Finally got the saw back out and finished up all the crown molding across the, the beam area on both sides. Did end up using, keeping the, uh, the bigger profile in here, but I did end up uh, redoing this piece even though I didn't have to pull it off, you know, as part of the, part of the beam stuff because uh, if you recall from a video or two ago, this was in like four or five different pieces in that first like two feet. So it just looked really stupid. So I went ahead and fixed it. But uh, yeah, got all the trim put up over uh, a few days ago. And then I was using some 3M small hole repair and some Sashco big stretch caulk, which this is one of my favorite latex caulks. It's made by Sashco. They make a lot of really good sealants, uh, both in the latex style, like, you know, latex caulks, big stretch, stuff like that. And then they have a lot of solvent based things as well, uh, like silicone replacements for in your showers, places like that, that hold up way better than that 100% silicone crap you can buy at Lowe's and Home Depot. But it's, uh, yeah, it's finally, it's finally done, ready for paint. So, I am, uh, it's a Saturday evening, got some playoff football on the TV, so I'm gonna start uh, painting. It's gonna be kind of choppy because I'm not gonna try and empty this entire room. You know, I've got a couch, we've got the two bookshelves and TV stand. So what I'm kind of gonna try to do is kind of use, use this fireplace as a divide and like move everything on that side of the room this way and then vice versa. Uh, and of course I got the stairwell as well to paint up there. There's lots of corners and natural break points where, I mean, ideally it's nice to just do everything in one shot, but I'll be able to just kind of do like one half of the room and then move the furniture back and so on and so forth. So it'll be kind of chopped up, but I'm gonna make it happen. I did indeed make it happen, uh, but that'll be in the next video. A spoiler alert, uh, I'm actually filming this a significant amount of time after what you were just watching because took a little bit of a break and also I still technically haven't finished that project yet. So I have to film a little bit more to finish the painting in the kitchen and the video was getting long enough that I felt like it was a good idea to go ahead and split it up, split up the you know drywall and painting aspect into two parts. So this will be the end of this video, but uh, very soon I will have the second part uploaded after I uh, get the rest of it finished and so stay tuned for that and I'll see you guys soon.